Unmistakably Australian. The kangaroo, tail pumping across an open plain, perhaps best symbolizes all that is different about this land. An isolated island, 10,000 summers of heat and wind and rain had shaped a different ecology, another order. Slowly, a curious world began to put a scale to this imposing addition to geography. A new continent, yet an ancient landmass. For eons, the Aborigine lived as one with this environment, preserving a delicate balance with nature. The artistry and ingenuity of these first Australians was to be a casualty of European settlement. The British were not the first here, but it was Pacific explorer James Cook who claimed sovereignty in the name of George III. That was 1770. 18 years later, a colony was established, a penal settlement. Not an illustrious beginning, but in retrospect, it was probably only this spirited stock who could have won survival, opened up the country, and began to build a dream. In 1850, the population was to triple. Gold fever jumped the Pacific. The new rush was from California to Australia. Rough ports were slowly transformed to respectable towns, but the backbone was still sheep and sweat. Reluctantly, the land had awarded her riches, but change was just around the corner. A great war, depression, the isolation was over. No longer the frontier. The colony had reached nationhood. The journey into yesteryear begins at any number of historical parks and settlements across the country. A recent heritage that reads as a lively short story, a diary of courage and achievement told in the dry, witty chronicle of her storytellers. Australians are themselves great travellers, and the country has been well organised to make the toing and froing as quick and comfortable as you like, or as slow and comfortable as you want. Wherever you go, however you get there, a welcome awaits. For here, the traveller can mix into the scene. You're the guest. Strike off alone to do your own thing, or go join in the fun. Getting about is snapshot simple and no worries or hassles about language or what you shouldn't eat and drink. Get to know firsthand the truth of that Australian reputation for friendliness. The bush, as it's called, is a backdrop of life outside the cities. You can stay over on some farms, Weeks or hours, it's an essential sample of the Australian way of life. The story of the wool industry is intertwined with the economic development which followed the success of growing a fine merino fleece for export. The smells of dusty sheep and lanolin mix with the organized frenzy of the hot open sheds as shearers peel off the yearly clip. The deep-rooted traditions of hard work, independence and mateship make this wild and woolly scene a part of folklore.
Grain crops are less romantic, but the combination of sunshine and the right rains are a good story for the export journals. Inland country towns all share an easygoing informality. No man is judged to be anything but a good bloke, unless he proves himself to be otherwise. Take time, mix, pick up the gossip and local anecdotes, and who knows, you may start to develop an accent to take home. One for two. Oh, isn't it cute? Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's what are these? Uh, this is hollow? No, that's a different sort of a geranium, isn't it? Yes, it's just, I think you can get so many different varieties. Can you? Yes. Most of the continent is farmed. From the air, a scale is revealed. Space, room to move. Such a huge land mass, it's difficult to generalize about climate. The seasons are the reverse of the Northern Hemisphere. Tropic storms and temperate showers take the edge off the preconception of the hot sun baking some remote desert. Frontier towns exist to supply the needs of cattle runs as big as countries. Streets echo some long gone dream of enterprises turned bad or hopes of mineral riches yet to unfold. Waitings interrupted by local entertainment. John Bronson, our old blackout didn't work around this time, but he's putting up a good show for him. And there's the whistle, John. John Bronson, and the horses. Awesome. I'm all wrapped up in that. Now I'm about to get a meal, and the plunger gets the ball. Then the doctor says, What happened? Alice Springs is the oasis town at the center of the continent. Tour base for frontier travelers where all the ingredients come together to make possible the outback experience. Outback is not a geographer's label, but it is an apt description for most of the interior of the continent. paddle a canoe through somewhere as dramatic as the Catherine Gorge is to begin to understand that this is wilderness like nowhere else. Things to do, certainly, like catching a breakfast-sized barramundi on a billabong. Things to see and appreciate. As strange a sight as one could want. The outback is never dull or monotonous. Chasms and gorges split the ancient crust to make strong dramatic breaks in the timeless scenery. As you travel outback Australia, examples too of the ancient art of the Aborigine. Dream time. An Aboriginal description of a complex mythology is the word that best prepares us for the infinity of the outback. 
the centrepiece landmark, Ayers Rock, part of Australia's best-known national park. A huge monolith sacred to the Aborigine, this place has a mythical quality which it communicates to all who come to achieve the climb and ponder or walk the ungroomed trails in and around its shadow. Sunrise and sunset are the drama of Ayers Rock, a daily rebirth. The cities cling close to the coast. They stir as the morning sun brushes places like Adelaide into action. Ringed by open parklands, nearby beaches, and mountains are the boundaries. Fresh produce is traded early to stock up the restaurants and dinner parties. Renowned for hospitality, good food and good living are part of the charm of Adelaide. Not far away, a valley called Barossa. Grapes that will become the vintage wines exported to an appreciative world. Hobart on the island Tasmania swings into the peak hour with a style any big city dweller would envy. All the better to clear the way for the travellers who are drawn to the satisfying mixture of history and gentle scenery. Canberra, the national capital, faces the decisions of the day around a man-made lake dressed by imposing public buildings. Diplomatic, government and academic faces mingle here in a new man-made setting. Canberra can be sightseeing or the indulgence of time, browsing the archives and treasures of the nation. The War Memorial, one of the fascinating collections. Australians love their sport. It's a passion, not a pastime for most. Horse racing is a year-round calendar worth catching. Watch the people if the horses don't hold your attention. Spring brings on the biggest carnivals on the turf, but cricket holds summer attention. An unemotional people, Australians are not quick to show their feelings, unless you put them on a sports field. One particular brand of madness is a football game called Australian Rules, an indigenous disease that sweeps the winter months. Played at an almost non-stop pace, it defies description, but it's a spectacle unsurpassed even for the uninitiated. Melbourne is the sporting capital, a racy reputation for a city which presents itself as cultured and stylish, a place where lunch is an event. window shopping or doing business. Melbourne's Victoriana background is acknowledged in gracious surroundings. A wave of migration over 30 years has given Australian cities a cosmopolitan gift, enriching life with an infused tradition of other cultures. Predominantly Christian, Australia needed population to make possible development, provide the manpower and the market for the economy to grow. Hundreds of thousands came to settle. Foreign sounding names and a softer complexion, the only hint by second generation of an ancestry other than the new homeland. A young country, Australia is still growing. Less than 15 million populate this vast continent. Sydney is the biggest city. Set around its harbour, the Opera House steals first attention. 
The city lives by and is in love with the water. Sailboats, cheeky ferries and leisurely sightseeing cruises share the commercial gateway to the nation. A vitality exists here that pumps life into the maze of old and new, making Sydney one of the world's great cities. Hardy, relaxed, friendly Sydney siders know how to enjoy their city and how to share it. Birthplace of the nation, Sydney has restored its original dock area known as the Rocks to its former glory. Australians host the world champions. Tennis is close to being the national sport. Bring your racket. Even if you're not a champ, you'll find a court and a partner. On the golf course, the pros show the way. But here, too, you can find a game if you can find the time. If you wonder where all the bronzed Australians play, head for a weekend surf carnival. The Pacific Ocean rolls along the wide east coast, washing a chain of golden beaches. Everyone has a personal favourite. The Gold Coast wins most votes. Year-round sunshine, a dozen man-made attractions, magnificent beaches, accommodation for every budget. Brisbane is gateway to the tropical sun. High-rise offices crowd along the river, vying for a better view of the interesting architecture and brilliant gardens that decorate the city. A city that can reflect the hours of sunshine still ahead after the doors of business close. For those who can afford the luxury of an afternoon siesta, what more idyllic setting than Brisbane? Darwin is the most northerly of the cities, an administration and communication centre of the youngest state. Once remote, Darwin is now well connected. Jets arrive with holidaymakers ready to join adventure attractions of the top end. Or make this their first port of call coming into the country. Another arrival point, Perth. The day ends last out west. Time to relax a little. Boomtown Perth plays out the energy after all the detail of guiding the growth of the nation's richest natural resources through the day. A contradiction. A modern city that looks as if somebody loves it. After dark, things begin to happen. Backstage, lines rehearsed, makeup in place, the scene is set for all the evening's performances. and tell me when we can hope to see each other again. You are always in my thoughts. A diverse repertoire of talent tours Australia. International names of theatre, music and dance play alongside local performers. Tickets to concerts, opera and ballet can be pre-arranged and waiting your pleasure.
Old techniques are given new form as crafts re-emerge as an indigenous art in a mix of media. To the touch and an appreciative eye, crafts are the collectible memento of an Australian visit. A range of galleries hold the visual art record. From Aboriginal times through the realists picturesque to modernists interpretation, the story of Australia is on display, often in surroundings themselves works of art. Opal provides the lure for lapidrists. The gem minerals are widely distributed, requiring some library research before buying a miner's right and setting out for a field day. Rainforest covers a small but important part of the coast. This wet and humid world provides a complex ecosystem for shy marsupials, birds, butterflies, and wild orchids. The rainforest spills off the mainland onto continental islands that make up part of the Great Barrier Reef. Aircraft call on castaway islands that fulfill all the criteria for paradise. All are different in their own way. Some exclusive game fishing bases, pleasantly developed resorts catering for the sun worshippers who want to be catered for with fine accommodation and a host of things to do. Stretching along one third of the east coast, the Great Barrier Reef swings away from the mainland. You have to journey across the sheltered patchwork between the outer reef and mainland to discover the reef. sail or under power. A flotilla of craft ply the waters of the reef, threading between the resort islands or just heading off for a leisurely day at some uninhabited island. The heron homes in on one island that's different. This is a true coral cave as much interest to the naturalist as the serious divers who know these reefs by reputation even before they arrive. For the Great Barrier Reef is, to the diver, his Grand Canyon or her Everest. There is nowhere else like this. It's another dimension of space and beauty. For Australia, isolation has had its benefits. Wildflowers so unique, the early botanists spent a century organizing the species into some order that the naturalist can follow.
Animals too, like no other, roam the open plains. The flightless emu, the familiar koala. Shy grazing mammals, the kangaroos may stop to play, but usually only seen early morning or evening. They avoid feeding or moving during the heat of the day. The birds of Australia are hard to miss. 730 species. Even the unobservant will be aware that here is one of the most remarkable aspects of natural Australia. Observation, of course, takes time and patience. One of its rewards, the platypus. Equipped as an amphibious prototype, fills a niche in the evolutionary chain between mammal and reptile. One of the strangest of Australia's fauna. At night, the bush is awake as the nocturnal tree-dwelling mammals move about to feed. The little penguin has spent all the daylight hours at sea fishing. Darkness is the cue to return to the rookeries on land. Sea lions take fishing less seriously. Natural Australia is one spectacular nowhere else can challenge. Getting to Australia is easy. Lots of airlines do it. Once here, you'll find accommodation the equivalent of any other part of the traveler's world. Spacious suite, modest bunkhouse, a yacht, a tent, a starry sky. You choose. Either way, the attention will be warm, casual and friendly. On tour, it's easy going. Whatever appeals, uncomplicated. The independence of your own rented keys and an open road. Head into the snow country, a deliberate decision to join the action. It doesn't snow anywhere else but the Alps. And it's one holiday idea Australia can offer when most of the other jet set snowfields are long since melted. Stay up in the mountains and join an expedition on horseback into some of the most rugged country. Cruise through the bush in the sedate luxury of a paddle steamer. Or paddle your own canoe to a whitewater adventure. Rail travel's a good idea. Cross town, into the bush, or across the continent. Where the trains don't go, coaches express you or guide you almost anywhere for any amount of time. Whatever appeals, Australia can produce the holiday idea for you, whichever way you travel. A different place, full of adventure. You'll find it friendly, easygoing and a unique experience. 
take this as an invitation. Come a waltzing Matilda. Well, up came the chumba, and he drank from the billabong. Up jumped the swagman, and he grabbed him with glee. And he sang as he shoved a chumba in his tucker bag. So come a waltz in Matilda with me. Waltz in Matilda, waltz in Matilda. So come a waltz in Matilda with me. And he sang as he shoved a chumba in his tucker bag. So come a waltz in Matilda with me. Well, up came the spotter and he's mounted on his thoroughbred. Up came the troopers, one, two, three. Who's the jolly chumbuck you've got in your tucker bag? You come a waltz in Matilda with me. Waltz in Matilda, waltz in Matilda. Who come a waltz in Matilda with me? Who's the jolly chumbuck you've got in your tucker bag? You come a waltz in Matilda with me. So up jumped the swagman and he leapt into the billabong. You never catch me alive, said he, and his ghost may be heard if you pass by that billabong. So come a waltz in Matilda with me. Waltz in Matilda, waltz in Matilda. Who come a waltz in Matilda with me? And his ghost may be heard if you pass by the billabong. Who come a waltz in Matilda?